Hi everybody, welcome to a Facebook Live with Jeannie. I am Jeannie Nielsen, the Card Lady, Stamping with Jeannie, and I'm very excited to be here with you today. Today, we are going to talk about the uh, Sunny Days Celebration Designer Paper. Um, I realize that there are so many times that we have stamp sets that go away, uh, never to be used again once the matching designer paper goes away. And that is one of the things that I expected to happen with playing in the rain. I kept the stamp set. I love the stamp set. But of course, because the paper went away, I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to do anything with this. Well, I've got some cards for you, and I'm very excited about that. And we are going to feature the Sunny Days uh, designer paper. This designer paper, I'm going to flip down and show you the patterns, but this designer paper is free with a $50 order. And it's really quite beautiful and quite uh, versatile, I would say. So why don't we flip down and I'll show you the cards. And I actually have four cards. The fourth card is made, made with the Let's Chat stamp set. This was a card that was inspired by Judy Tuttle. Um, I changed it up just a tiny bit and it fits with the paper just beautifully. So let me show you the paper. We're going to flip down. Actually, I'm going to flip up so that you can look down. And I'll try to stay on top of comments, but most likely I won't. So let me tell you, please comment. Please like my video. Please share my video. I will get back to every single comment. If it's something specifically to a specific card, just do me a favor and kind of say, oh, uh, with that turtle card, I loved it or something like that. Just so I know what you're talking about. If you say this card is my favorite. Tell me which one, because otherwise I won't have any idea without watching the entire video and seeing where your comment came up. So, but on that note, I love getting your comments. I love seeing where you're from. Tell me about your weather anyway, and I'll tell you about mine while I'm stamping because there's going to be some dead space while I'm coloring. Okay, we're going up to go down. Join me. There we are. So I'm on my stamping glass mat. And of course, we also have our host code for January. You can get this stamp set or this card kit, I should say, with your $35 order. Bump it up to $50 and get this designer paper so you can make more of these cards. This is going to be especially wonderful for you that have the Playing in the Rain stamp set from last year. I think I love this card kit. So Let's get on with this and show you the paper. This is the first designer paper, clouds, sunny clouds, thunderstorm clouds, all kinds of clouds. Um, you'll see how I used it in my uh, card coming up. The back has clouds and then raindrops. And I'll show you what I did with that too. I used this for another card and I'll show you what I did. So here's, like I said, thunder clouds and here's our fair weather clouds with the raindrops underneath. This is probably either Sweet Sorbet or Poppy Parade with the flowers. I honestly didn't pay any attention to it and use it in any of my cards. The back side of it is this really pretty gingham. I think it would be considered a gingham. It's a check. It almost, you know, it reminds me of graph paper um, for math, um, but I love this pretty color. Um, one of my favorites, and this is going to be great for uh, something. Can you do see yourself using a, doing a four-leaf clover? You can cut out hearts making a clover um, because our clover punch retired last year. But isn't this so pretty? I totally can see something with this paper. So I'll be getting more of this paper. The back has rainbows. Of course it has rainbows because there's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbows. So this, these two papers are great for St. Patrick's Day, I think. Then we've got our fruit inspired ones. Here we have strawberries. Uh, the back of it are these butterflies. I didn't end up using the butterflies or the strawberries. I can see myself doing a strawberry uh, card when I um, actually get the blueberry set as well. So we'll do something with it. My favorite paper in the whole pack is right here. I love the the red with the pink and the blue. It, it's just a classic uh, setup. I just, it's just so pretty. And the white, of course, makes everything pop. The back of it is the sunny skies, these uh, sun rays. 
and you'll see what I did with that. Then we have our cherries. So we've got our strawberries, we've got our cherries, and we'll of course have the blueberry stamp set and we'll have our blueberries. So we're gonna have a very fruity class one of these days. Um, and the back of it is this blue pool party uh, diagonal stripe. So those are the papers that are in here. Um, on the back of the package, of course, it tells us that in there we have basic black, crushed curry, petal pink, pool party, poppy parade, and shaded spruce. So uh, poppy parade is the red that you see. I have to tell you, um, I'm going to show you really quickly and you can tell me what you think. I can see that this is shaded spruce and I can see that in here too. But if you look at this paper, um, let me find it. Um, the one that has the flowers, of course, I don't have it. It's not going to pop up for me now. Here it is. I think that this is totally pretty peacock. Actually, I guess it could be black, but I did it as pretty peacock. So stay tuned. Let's see what we're going to do with these cards. I'm doing this on my beautiful glass mat. You can use uh, get your glass mat for free when you sign up as a demonstrator. Let's get going on our cards. I'm so excited. And they're going to take a little bit because they all require some coloring and stamping. This is my first card. Look at how cute this is. Uh, Rainy days are better with you. And of course, I have my fox that I colored with my blends. Um, I'll show you exactly how I made it. So this is the paper that I said would be great for St. Patrick's Day, the flowers. And I cut it on the diagonal. And here, of course, behind here, you can't see it, but this is the clouds paper. So let's make this card very quickly. There's a few pieces to it, but it's really easy. And then I have something really fun to share with you too. So let me put this off to the side here. First of all, we have our card base. And our card base is not a typical fold card. Our card base is smoky slate, four and a quarter by five and a half. So instead of having a fold and having a, the inside, our card is going to be right here. So, and I'm gonna show you something with that. That's why there's nothing stamped in there. So stay tuned. So four and a quarter by five and a half, a quarter sheet of your cardstock. This is smoky slate. And next I'm going to put on a layer of shaded spruce. Now the shaded spruce, I've got to look at this, three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I've got my designer paper here. And this is, like I said, the clouds. This is three and three quarters by five. Yes, it is. I'm just double checking that I'm really doing this right. So this is the back of the paper. Let me show you what we're gonna do. So first we are going to add the designer paper to the shaded spruce. And it's really kind of a close, uh, there's just a 16th of an inch around everything because there's just a difference of an eighth of an inch. Um, I'm gonna put this on our card base and our card base, like I said, is the smoky slate. We do it like this. And then I'm gonna tell you some more about the rest of the card. So here we have this. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we have our mini card. And our mini card is six and a half inches by four and a quarter inches, I believe. Yes. And then we're going to score it in half at three and a quarter inches. So six and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches high, and you're scoring it at three and a quarter on the long inch on the long side. Next, what I want to do, I have my shaded spruce layer, and this sh shaded spruce layer is three and one eighth by four and one eighth. So it is going to be an eighth of an inch less um, than our front card. Now, what I do have to tell you is I took a little bit more off because I wanted to have a little bit more of an edge. So it's three and an eighth. It's probably actually closer to three and a sixteenth by four and one sixteenth because it's not going to matter too much with our paper here. Let me show you how I cut it depending on which corner you start with is how your paper is going to, sh um, the alignment of your paper. So this one I cut from the left corner to the right corner. If I wanted to do it from the right corner to the left corner, of course my designer paper is going to be on this side no matter what. And I chose this paper because no matter what I, how I look at it, 
I think that the paper, the flowers can be upright, but they could also be down. Um, some of our, if you think about the, um, I want to call it echinacea, the um, the cone flower, it kind of pops out. The head is the the uh, t the cone of the center. The stamens are they are higher than the petals, which kind of fold back on itself. So you can do either side. But I do like to do it three and a quarter by four and an eighth. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I've got my paper cutter here, and I'm going to put my corners, my top left corner, my bottom right corner, right in the track, right on the guide of the ruler. And if you do that so that the points are in there, you're going to be able to cut it straight. So let's do that. And there we go. Voila. So that's how we cut our paper on the diagonal. So top left corner to bottom right corner. I'm going to move the paper cutter because I don't think we need it for any of our other cards. I've done a lot of the prep work ahead. So I'm going to put my paper. And this time I'm going to, like I said, I was. it can go either way, but I'm going to use the other side of the paper. So it's actually, it is upside down, but it doesn't look it. So but because I've already done right side up, I don't want everybody to have upside down flowers and me have all, the only flowers that are right side up, if that makes any sense. I'm trying to do it so that, there we go, beautiful. So there we go, just like that. Now we're going to do the rest of the stamping. And I've got some fun stamping. Uh, because I have my glass mat, I don't need to have my Pearson pad um, for the photopolymer stamps. This, um, or for the regular red rubber stamps. So first, what I'm going to do is pull out my stamp. This is the fox with the umbrella. And I thought it looked really good with the cloud paper behind it. Um, let me get my memento. And because it's a big stamp, what I like to do, oh, that's gonna be a problem. I just stick, stuck my hand in the ink and I don't wanna get it all over my, I think we're okay. Okay, because this is a big stamp, I'm going to bring the ink pad to the stamp. Um, what I like to do with my memento, I kind of twist it on there. Now that's not going to work and make sure you don't do that with your regular foam pads, but this is a felt pad and it does a really good job of getting it into the little nooks and crannies. So we are going to, um, how am I gonna stamp this? I wanna do it so that it fits and I can cut it out. Um, I'm not gonna cut it out today, I don't think, because I'm going to totally run out of time if I do that. So let me just show you how I colored it and what blends I used. So first what I did, I only used three, uh, four blends for this. Um, the copper clay I used, this is the light copper clay, and I did it entirely for my fox. So let me show you. This doesn't take much of anything to show you this. It's pretty easy to color. And I just realized something. The ears, of course, are sticking out of the hat, so don't forget your ears. Don't forget your little paws, the feet and the hands. And that's our fox. That's all it is. Oh, nope, the tail. Okay, and I just realized that I did something different with my other card. Um, because it does look like there's two different um, colors because of the way the... Um, you know what? I wonder if this... Is this a fox? It could even almost... No, because it's not a stripe. I was going to say it could even be a skunk, but no, it can't. Um, what I did with the other card was... I did do it a little bit lighter in the second part of the tails. And you can either take your color lifter and get rid of some of that extra color, or go back over the tail again, and maybe even a third time, just to add some extra. So just like that. I don't wanna do that to my face because I do want it to be a little bit light, but there we go. I think we're gonna do that to our body too. So I'm going to do that. Now, the only thing that I did with this card um, besides coloring it, I did cut it out. Let me show you. Um, I did um, pool party for the jacket. 
I was thinking yellow, but pool party really matched the best here. So let's do that. We're gonna color our rain jacket with pool party. I think I used the light before, but we're gonna use the dark this time because I wanna use the light in my umbrella. So in my umbrella, I have um, four strips and or four sections. So I'm going to do the light pool party in two of them. And then to bring out the shaded spruce that I have on here, I use shaded spruce and I did the light shaded spruce. I don't want it too dark um, for the other sections of the umbrella. So that's that. Almost done with this, sorry guys. Um, so talking about the weather, we have had snow, we've had rain, we've had lots of rain. We've actually had our pumps going twice this week. So we kind of had a snow day on uh, Monday, last Monday. And then on Tuesday, it was actually Sunday to Monday. Last Tuesday, we got so much rain that we had to have the pumps going in the driveway. Overnight, in about the 12 hours, we got four inches of rain. Luckily, not all at the same time. So what I would do next is cut this out with the coordinating die. And there is, this is the die that we would be cutting it out with. So, but I'm not going to do that because we're going to run out of time if I do that. I do have a label and I'm going to stamp my sentiment with my label. And where is that? What did I write? I think I said, rainy days are better with you. So I'm gonna stand up to stamp this so I'm over top, but we'll do it just like that. Hopefully I'm straight. Eh, not bad. Perfect. So, and then I've gotta show you what I did on the inside of the card because there is um, an inside of this mini card. So I would add this to the top of my card here. I'm popping it up with dimensionals. And then I've cut out my fox here and he's uh, popped up and cut out with the die, And but he's popped up with dimensionals. Uh, now I wanna talk to you about the inside. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about the inside is because I goofed. So I'm not gonna finish this card, but I do wanna show you, I'm gonna show you this card finished. Um, the inside of the card, this shaded spruce is, um, what did I say? Did I say three and an eighth by four and an eighth? And then I have these pieces of paper, the basic white, which I believe is also, is that three and an eighth or did I do three by four? No, I did three by four. Okay, so it's three by four on this one. Now look what I did and you'll see why I'm pointing this out. I have my clouds stamped in pool party, beautiful. I have my raindrops, I have my puddle. So this is going on in the inside of the card. Do you see what I did here though? And this was my first goof. Pay attention to the direction of your raindrops before you stamp. Stamp on your glass mat, stamp on your scrap paper, and make sure your raindrops are going in the right direction. I did re-stamp it over here, did a much better job, and we're going to put that on the inside. So I just wanted to point out, pay attention to the direction of your raindrops before you stamp. Because there is a right and a wrong raindrop direction. It's hard for rain to go upward. Okay, so here we go. Let me pull that over a little bit so it looks better. Perfect. And then the only other thing I did here was I added a little lightning. Isn't that so cute? These little, um, this is adhesive back lightning and stars. Now this lightning, and you could do the blue, I could also have done the white. Um, this was from the Rock and Roll Suite. So isn't that cool though? I love how I was able to pull that in and make it look really cool. So that's our card, our first card, and it was so easy. And I'll finish the other one because I've colored it now. I just have to um, die cut, but I'll finish that at another time. So let me put this off to the side and bring out card number two. So what do you think? Do you love it? Isn't it so cool? I love it. I should stand up and make sure I'm in. There we go, in the picture. So there we go, and that's our inside. Okay, card number two. 
This is probably my favorite card. It is a little busy, but it is absolutely my favorite card. Okay, this is using the turtle. So let me show you the card and you can tell me what you think. Isn't it so cute? So this is more of that, I told you it was my favorite pattern of the Sunny Days designer paper. So let's talk about this card. So fun. So I started, let, actually let's make the card. Let's make the card right now. I had a hard time with my turtle. I have to tell you, getting the right colors took me a while. I think I'm happy with them now though. I know it's probably not perfect to have a pretty peacock turtle. They're probably more like Old Olive, but the designer paper does not have Old Olive and it, the Old Olive would not match. So I've got all my pieces here. So here I have a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of pool party. I scored it in half at five and a half. So that's our first piece. Then next one I'm going to do, I have a one and three quarter inch strip of uh, designer paper, um, one and three quarters by five and a half. And I'm just going to attach that to the side here. And this card was inspired by something I saw on Pinterest and I just totally changed the paper and everything. I just, I did a lot of different actually. But so make sure when you put it on that you uh, are even with the top fold um, because you can always cut off the bottom. Let me tell you, I've done it before where I've cut off the top and I've actually cut into my score line. So if you are a little bit long, and I can see here that I am a little bit long, it's easier to take it off the bottom. If you take it off the top, you risk putting a hole in your card. I've done it. That's why I know. Okay, so let me do the next part. We have our paper here, our designer paper. And I have to measure because I don't remember. Um, oh, this is three and three eighths by uh, four and seven eighths. That's, oh, four and three quarters. So this is the a, a deckled rectangle. I have to tell you, this is a deckled rectangle. This, I believe, is the second largest deckled rectangle. So it comes out to be three and three eighths by four and seven eighths. So what I did with my card here, I did a three, oh no, three and three quarters. Whew, keep forgetting. Three and three eighths by four and three quarters is the deckled rectangle size. It's the second largest. And then I have my poppy parade here, which is four and seven eighths by three and a half. So it's just an eighth of an inch larger. So what I'm going to do is attach that to the paper real quick, very easy. And then I'll tell you everything else that I did. So here we have this. I was struggling a little bit with this because this really is a very, very busy pattern. And in fact, my little turtle here does get lost in it. That's why I decided to put the white bridge there because I said, I have to call attention to the turtle. If he's just sitting on the paper, nobody is going to notice it. So I'm going to attach both of these layers to my card base now just like that. So I'm centering it, making sure, of course, the pattern is right side up. There we go. Um, now I have all of my pieces and I attached them all together. Um, I've already die cut a bunch of these. The only thing I haven't die cut is my turtle that I have to stamp. So let me tell you about the turtle or let me stamp it for you, I should say. Um, I guess we'll have to do it on this piece of paper, even though I think this was supposed to be my inside. Okay, I didn't bring scrap paper, so instead of the inside, unless this is scrap paper, ah, let's just use this. I'm going to take my Memento ink again. Let me move this one off so that my card class is all ready. I've got my turtle, and once again, I'm going to take my Memento to my stamp set because, or stamp image, because it's so nice and easy um, to fill in those holes and get a nice clear image stamping. Isn't that beautiful? Stamps like, stamps like a charm. Okay, I'm gonna clean off this so I don't get it on my card. Okay, now let me show you what the three colors I used. I used the light, 
uh, Pretty Peacock. I used the dark Poppy Parade and I used the dark Petal Pink to color my thing. When I first started, I started by coloring in the spots and the shell with the Petal Pink. Actually, I did this four times. When I first, first started, I ended up with everything Pretty Peacock light and dark and it was just way too dark. Um, yeah, my my guy would have shown up, but he, he wasn't looking very good. Then I ended up, and I don't think it's gonna, I don't know if it'll make a difference or not, but I started by coloring the Scots, uh, the spots, not the Scots, the spots with the petal pink. And then I decided I had to do it a little bit different. So instead I did over the petal pink and I think we're gonna be okay. But there was petal pink under, on this card, the petal pink was under the Poppy Parade. So if it looks a little bit lighter, that's why, because initially I had colored it with the petal pink and then just decided, oh, it doesn't look good. So it doesn't take long to color in the spots and then it doesn't take long to color in the rest of your guy either. So I'm gonna just color him very quickly. The only thing I didn't do was color his eyes and maybe I would have given him some yellow in his eyes but I decided it was easier to just not color his eyes at all. So they definitely pop out. So there we go. I'm coloring in my, I'm trying to be a little bit careful because I, it's a, you know, I love to stamp and then die cut my images first. I don't like it when I, die cut after I color because if it moves on me I've wasted all that time coloring so that's why I'm trying to be extra careful though with my coloring and then I will make sure that I have my post-it note or whatever to make sure it doesn't move on me when I'm die cutting so I'm being more careful than I normally would because it's a little bit out of my way so there we go we've got our turtle isn't he cute? He's adorable, I think. Okay, and then the only other thing I did was I colored my flower. And I got the inspiration of the flower color from the flowers, of course. So I did red, poppy parade again on the pe flower petals. And then my center is the petal pink. Just like that. So let me tell you what I did next. Okay, so I would be die cutting him. Next, what I did was I die cut, and this you're gonna see in the next card, this little bow tie I thought was adorable. It's actually supposed to be for the kite strings, but I thought it made an adorable bow tie, especially he's bringing his flower to his bow, don't you think? So, okay, so next what I did was I have my bridge, and this bridge, die cut out of basic white cardstock. It is so easy to cut this, I'm I'm telling you. Um, I put it here and what I did was I added little mini dimensionals. I'm doing all the steps up until I die cut the turtle because I, with four cards, there's just not time for that, so. I'm gonna do it like that. One more little mini dimensional. Somebody has used their take your pick tool and I have to see if I can get that to work. So I'm going to add this right here. And then I'm going to pop up my turtle when I cut him out and I'm going to tuck him under there. I'm gonna tuck him under the bridge, okay? Next, what I did, I die cut a little from a little puddle because why do we have a bridge here? Well, we'd better have a bridge for a reason. So I put some water under the bridge. So I'm just going to attach that right here, just like that. Now it doesn't show up, but I know it's there. So that's what makes it important. And then I have these little greenery, and this is out of Pretty Peacock scraps. This The grass is going to go on each side, just like that. If I put this, because I put the... Uh, bridge a little bit higher. I think I'm going to be okay adding my, uh, just like that. And we're going to do one more. You have to use a mini dimensional for this because it has to be low enough 
if you do the big dimensional, it's gonna pop up on top of the other. And if you want to, you can uh, bend this forward, put a little bit of glue behind that. That's what I ended up doing with mine. They're both glued down here so that they wouldn't uh, pop up on me. Here is my uh, bow tie. I'm gonna put that on before I lose it. I just love this little guy in a bow tie. There we go. And ta-da, that's that part of the card. The only other thing I have to do, and I didn't die cut this, but the only other thing I have to do is stamp. Well, where's my turtle? We'll put, we'll stamp on here. I'm going to stamp my Oh Happy Day. I'm gonna stamp that in Poppy Parade to kind of bring these colors in together. Oh Happy Day is part of the Playing in the Rain stamp set. Perfect. Uh, and then what I did, I have to show you the die that I used to cut this out um, because it's a different die. So we've got the Playing in the Rain die so far. Um, and this die and this die were both part of another set. So where do I have that? This is part of the, uh, the Thoughtful Expressions stamp set, I believe. Thoughtful something. Um, but you've got our, we've got beautiful dies here and they both have the stitching. This is the one, the stamp set that has the matching, the hummingbird and everything. So beautiful dies besides a beautiful stamp set. This bundle should be on your must have stamp list for sure. So, and I could have done little flowers, but I was trying to stick to mostly playing in the rain, but that's, these are the two labels that I've used for these two cards, just to let you know. So the only thing that I would do now is die cut this one, and this is the second smallest. I'm gonna die cut that, I'll get that lined up. And then I am gonna die cut, of course, my turtle. Pop him up, and then inside, what I did, I stamped some flowers. So let me do that real quick, because that'll only take a second. This is in Memento again. We got the flowers from the stamp set, because I kind of feel like that. I was gonna put them there, but it was too busy. So instead, I'm gonna put them in the bottom of my card, just like that. And we will color them. I'll color them later, but I used, again, the Pretty Peacock, the Petal Pink, and the Poppy Parade to color it. So those are that, and I'll get to finish this card. But in the meantime, so you can see what I'm talking about, this is the card that we just made. Isn't it beautiful? So. You have to tell me what you think and tell me at the end which is your favorite card. Um, like I said, I do know that it's really kind of busy, but oh, boy, do I love this card. Okay, let's move on. Let me clean up my mess again and go on to card number three. Card number three is, again, with Playing in the Rain. Okay, so let me show you the card. This is the card. And... I'm not a big fan of this ribbon, but the ribbon is free. It's part of Celebration. Um, and let me talk about this card a little bit. So when I was making this card, let me pull it out here. I actually used two different designer papers. Um, this is the one that's the back of this card. Um, this pool party is the back of that one. I'll show you. And the clouds are the ones that had the raindrops at the bottom for just a strip. So I cut off the raindrops, which were about, I think it was three and an eighth inches. I can't remember. Um, and let me just measure everything and I'll tell you how I did it. But I divided the eight and a quarter inches or eight and three quarters, eight and a half inches. There was eight and a half inches um, of the clouds left with the rain at the bottom. So I cut this into uh, four different strips. So this is two and an eighth inches, if that makes any sense at all. I know it's a little confusing, but I had my designer paper. The raindrops were at the bottom. I cut off the bottom strip. What was left, I divided by four, and that turns into two and one sixteenths. I forgot, two and one sixteenths. Two and an eighth, it is two and an eighth. So two and an eighth inches. And then I have this to make up the difference for five and a quarter inches. So this is 
just shy of, this is three and an eighth. So we have two and an eighth and three and an eighth, and that makes five and a quarter inches. I am going to glue that onto a piece of basic white, four by five and a quarter. So it's four inches wide by two and an eighth and three and an eighth. You're gonna have to go back and, and of course, if you get the card kit, you get the written tutorial. But hopefully I will get time this week to put it in a blog post. I hope you're checking out my blog. My blog is on stampingwithgenie.com. And I've tried to start including ideas in there. So um, I'm going to put this at the bottom. So this has the cherries. I was wrong. This has the cherries on the back. So we're going to add that just like that. And the reason that I added the ribbon was because there's a definite seam here. And I figured it's celebration anyway. If you choose not to, you don't have to. If you choose not to, you don't have to put this ribbon over here. Um, I'm not a fan. I, I may actually leave it off of this one. It, it's just a little too much. I mean, why would you have ribbon? But I had to hide the seam a little bit. So anyway, let's instead, let's not put the ribbon here. I'm going to attach this to the paper here, just like that. Maybe I'll hold off, but I have here my stitched circle. This is the stylus shaped circle. This is the second largest circle, and I die cut that. And I'm ha I have that down here, and then what I'm going to do is stamp my rabbit. And you'll see that I was going to, uh, I also colored in my puddle, but it turns out that you don't need to color in your puddle because guess what? That the dye cuts out the puddle separately. There is a dye for the puddle, but it cuts out um, the bunny separate from the puddle. So, so don't color in your puddle. That's my point, especially if you want a white rabbit. So I've got my rabbit here. I should have stood up to do that, but you get the idea. The, when I colored with this, there's only, I used a couple of different, uh, I'm gonna have to go back with my journaling pen and or my black marker and color over that because I don't like that. I didn't do a great job with that, but I decided to have, he needs a yellow raincoat, especially if he's splashing in a puddle. The problem is, it turns out that in my thing, he isn't splashing in a puddle anymore, so. Okay, pretend that I did a good job stamping this. I could have done it over again, but we're gonna just go with it. And I'll take my black marker and I'll go over the lines when I finish. Okay, so here he is with his yellow jacket. I don't need to color his the puddle, so let me put that away actually. Um, I've got a flirty flamingo, and the flirty flamingo is the light flirty flamingo. And what I'm gonna do is color both his nose and then his cheeks. So I'm gonna give him two cheeks. And you can go back over if you want to and use your color lifter if you want them a little bit lighter. And then of course his ears, he needs a little bit of flirty flamingo in his ears. And then all we're going to do is die cut this guy. The other thing I did was I decided to stamp, and I think, oh, here they are the flowers, and then I pop the flowers up too. So the flowers, again, I did in Flirty Flamingo and Daffodil Delight. So we've got our light Flirty Flamingo, our dark Daffodil Delight, and then for the leaves here, I did uh, dark Granny Apple Green. Just because these colors are so bright, I kind of wanted it to kind of match. Let's put the rest of this guy together. We've got our um, kite here. He's flying a kite. So we've die cut him and we're going to ignore the puddle because he, we are not going to be using the puddle in this. He's not splashing in puddles, he's flying a kite. Um, and where are my pieces? I've already done the die cutting. I've got my clouds and I actually stamped these, but then I decided, no, I'm just gonna have regular clouds that are white on up in the sky, so. You know what? I'm going to die cut this guy so you can see, so that we can finish this. So let me do the flowers. Um, I think I've got plenty of time that we have time to do both. So there's our flowers. 
and we're going to die cut both of these with, and I'm going to have to cut it out off a little bit, um, with our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So I've got that here. Let me get my snips because it's not going to fit. You have a maximum width of three and a half inches with the um, mini stamp and cut and emboss. And because I knew this was here, I'm even going to cut this off go like this. And we'll save that for another time. Okay. I like the shelf liner so that this doesn't move on me. I've got my mini stamp and cut, my blue mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. This was last year's um, special if you signed up for um, to be a demonstrator. This year's special I think is even better, of course, and that is the um, glass mat. $60 value if not more. So we're going to get my bunny. So I know you can't necessarily see, just trust that this is what I'm doing. I'm here, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just lining this up, the ears and everything. And then, like I said, you can see that the puddle stays there. So I'm gonna put that here and hope for the best. So you can't, like I said, you can't see me die cutting. And I apologize for that, but this is gonna shake the table possibly a little bit. Fingers crossed that this didn't move on me after all this. I'm not gonna cut the flowers right now. Oh, that's not terrible. Okay, we're just gonna cut the bunny so I can show you the rest of the card made up. So we'll set this off to the side for a second. This is what I did. I did my circle popped up with some regular dimensionals and I left the middle open. So I'm just going to put my dimensionals on the back in the four corners of a circle. If a circle has corners, that's where I'm putting it. Just like that. Just like that. And the reason why I'm not putting it in the center is because I'm also going to pop up my bunny. So here, let's go like this. Go like that. And then I'm popping up my bunny here. And I'm going to pop him up in the center. And then when I put him in my envelope, he's going to kind of sink into those spots, if that makes any sense at all. So when I mail it, I'm not going to be paying a fortune because I'm double bumped up. That's why I'm doing this. So just doing it like that. And hopefully he's gonna find his way into the center, just like that. Okay, now we have our kite, which I cut out of Daffodil Delight. And we have our kite uh, the other piece, and this is really easy. You can see how this lines up. It's a perfect fit. You don't have to make too much of it. It's not a difficult puzzle to figure out. So let me add some glue to that. And then I, uh, I did it backwards because the larger side is down at the bottom, okay. So there we have our piece just like that. I'm gonna tuck him under here, but I'm going to um, put some dimensionals on the back of my kite too. So right there. So this, I'm just showing you how to use your playing in the rain with the Sunny Skies designer paper, just so that you don't forget about your playing in the rain stamp set. That's really why I'm doing this because I love the stamp set and I think it's a good match. And there are probably other ideas out there that I didn't. I couldn't come, because there are only three animals, I only came up with three ideas, but there are lots of other ideas. So there we have that. And then of course we have the bow ties are all uh, the little kite string decorations. So let's put them on here. I'm gonna give three dots, one, two, three, like that. And you know what? I'm going to use my reverse tweezers to put this on so that it doesn't get glue all over me. Oh, that was the plan. There's the 
there's one. The reverse tweezers are um, part of the embossing additions kit, if you want that. I love the, uh, does a really good job of gripping. Okay, so there, ah, there, without getting glue on my hands, I got my little bow ties on the, on the kite. And what I wanted to do, the last thing that I wanted to do, if I can find it, besides attach this to my, see, if you do a good job of putting your seams together, I don't think you need the ribbon there. So that's why I'm ignoring that part. So, but you are going to want a piece of the um, basic white four by five and a quarter to mount this because otherwise you just won't be able to do a good job um, getting it centered. So there we go. Perfect. And then the other thing, if I can find my clouds, which I don't think I can, I think my clouds have disappeared. I showed them to you and then they disappeared. Oh, here they are. Here they are. This is how my stamp room looks when I'm stamping. I just, I move from one space to another until my space gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I have to clean because there's just no other room. So here we go. We'll do that upside down and we're gonna put this one right there. So you can do either way. You can use one big one or two little ones. Isn't that so cute? Now, the only thing I haven't put here yet are the flowers, so I will finish that up in a minute because I don't think I have the die here. Um, I'm gonna put that in the corner right there. So there is our card. And you can tell me, do you like it with the ribbon? Do you like it without? I kind of feel like it needs it without. It's just a little bit too much. But tell me what you think. Okay, so the flowers will go here. So this is our card number three. Let's go to card number four. And like I was saying, this card was inspired by Judy Tuttle. Um, and it uses the Let's Chat stamp set. Now the Let's Chat stamp set is this one with the telephone. And you're thinking, hmm, how in the world could you make this into a card using the, play, the uh, Sunny Skies designer paper? Well, let me show you. Um, this is the card that I came up with. Um, and I should show you the card that it's inspired from. This card was done by Judy. I just changed it up a little bit. And I'm not sure what this yellow paper is, but I'm pretty sure this is also from Celebration Paper. But isn't that so cute? So really cute. And then I just changed it to the paper that has the sun on it, the sun, the race of sun. Okay, let's do this card real quick. And then I will be all set. Or I can at least do the card so I can show you how I built it. Um, there's an extra set of dies in here. This one, the one that says, hey, is actually part of the postage, uh, perennial postage dies. So you've got your, it almost looks like a sign, doesn't it? So let me make this card with you because I really like this. Okay, so I'm going to start with a piece of crushed curry cardstock that's four by five and a quarter inches. And then I have here three pieces of paper and hopefully I kept them in a row. I can't say that I necessarily did, but I tried, yes I did, okay. Um, to keep them in a row, and I'm going to put them, I'm going to mount them on my crush curry. So these pieces are one and a quarter inches wide, so I have three strips, one and a quarter inches wide, and they're five and one eighth inch long. So let me add them to here and show you what we're going to do. This is the paper that has the flowers on the back. I knew there was one of them that had that. Okay. So obviously I have to place another order because... I went through a lot of my Sunny Skies paper today to make these cards. I'm going to try and do it as close and as even as I can. There we go. This one is going to go in the middle. I'm gonna leave that here. I'm actually going to mount this one on this side. So, because I'm centering it top, bottom, and right on this side, top, bottom, and left on that side. 
And then our remaining space, it'll be nice and even for the strip that's gonna go in between, just like that. Not perfect. That's why we wait until the end. So that's that. So I've got my rays of sunshine and I'm mounting this on my Crush Curry four by five and a quarter inches. Okay, next I have a deckled circle here. This is the second, oh, I don't know. I don't know what, let me just tell you that it is a two and an eighth inch deckled circle. Is that the largest, the smallest? I don't know, you'll have to figure that out. But let me show you what we're going to do next. We have our stamp set. And there's a lot of pieces to this. Wait until you see all these pieces. We've got a lot of stamping to do here because I also stamped on the inside. Okay, I've got my Memento. I've got Melon Mambo. I've got Berry Burst and I have my Crush Curry. So we're going to start with Berry Burst. And the reason I'm starting with Berry Burst is because that is my heart in the center here. I decided to do it with Berry Burst rather than Melon Mambo. Actually, I decided to add do everything with Melon Mambo later, which is why that is the case. So let's see. I'm going to stamp that in the middle. I see some of my team members on having a conversation. We had our team Christmas party yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. But Anne is right, Lori. It would have been more fun if you were there, but it was so fun anyway. Okay. Berry Burst. I'm going to put that aside because that's the only thing I am going to use uh, for this, the Berry Burst for. I have Crush Curry and I just finished uh, re-inking this. So hopefully it's going to do a better job. With this one, I actually went over it with my Crush Curry marker. There is no Crush Curry blend, by the way, in case you were wondering, just like there's no Garden Green blend. Hopefully, because I've re-inked this, this is going to work better and do a better job. What I'm going to do is start by making the rays of the sun at the top. Beautiful. That actually worked pretty well. I'm going to flip that, and I'm going to do it at the bottom, because that's the best way to line it up, right? So there we have our sun at the bottom. So now we can do the left and the right side, the east and the west. We're just going to go like that, stamp it in between. And one more, we're going to stamp it in between. So that's your biggest trick for stamping this straight, I think. Top and bottom, and then don't just keep going around because you don't know necessarily the space to put in between. I don't need any more crushed curry, so I'm gonna put that aside for a second. So far, so good, right? Do you remember the radiating stitches dies? This is the heart from the radiating stitches dies, and I really, really like this heart. Um, so I decided to add that to kind of go with the, I don't know, just to go with it. And then we have our hay. And hay is actually a great big long stamp with a lot of squiggles, and it could be part of the phone cord. But um, I have done my die cutting of my perennial postage die cut. And this is the only one I believe that has straight sides on two of the sides. So you'll know which one to use because it's the only one that has that. For anybody that's watching that's going to the retreat, I'm gonna have extra kits that you can do this at retreat too. So keep that in mind. Okay, we're going to stamp hay. I'm standing up to stamp it just like that. And because I got some ink on here, I actually didn't wet it, but I'm going to wipe that off before it gets on anything. Oh, this means I'm getting long-winded because there's my, I didn't wet this, so, but look at that, comes right off. Memento, and maybe even stays on, I haven't tried that, but. Okay, so we've got that, and we've got that. I still have to stamp my inside, so stay with me a little bit longer, guys. We're almost done. Um, this one, I'm gonna pop up with some dimensionals. Yes, I do have a Christmas clock. I love my Christmas carols, and this is the best way for me to keep Christmas in my heart all year long. There are other ways, of course, but I'm thinking of Tiny Tim. Okay, I'm just adding dimensionals to my stamped sun, and we're gonna put that right there. 
just like that. You don't have to be picky about it. I'm going to add a dimensional. I could probably do two to the center of my heart that I've done with the radiating stitches. I hope I haven't been off camera too much. I try to stay on, but I get carried away sometimes. There's our heart. Now what we're going to do before I add this hay, I'm going to use my elegant twine, elegant trim, I should say, and I'm going to just tie a bow, a large loopy bow with my gold trim, just like that. Just like that. And then I need to cut my, cut my paper snips right here. We're going to cut this and I'm going to mount this with a glue dot down here. So let's just take our glue dot. We're going to go like this. We're going to put it kind of right there. And then I'm going to take some well, I bet he has to go up a little bit higher. Let's put it up a tiny bit higher, just like that. And then I'm going, and I'm doing it off to the side. So I'm doing it like that. I'm trying to copy hers, and she did a really good job with it. So I should be doing a better job of centering this and figuring out where it gets placed. Put more dimensionals on. Can never have too many dimensionals. Just remember, though, if you have too many dimensionals, you are going to pay. Um, it does cost more to uh, mail if it has dimensionals. So there we go. Just like that. Just like that. Okay, so this is going on to our card front. And then let's stamp the inside because that's the most fun yet. I've got more fun coming. Almost done, almost done. Because I didn't, I think because I stamped it and didn't color it in with the marker, I kind of like this one even better than this one. Oh yes, and then we have our um, dots, and these are new, um, what are they? Iridescent foil gems. And we're going to use our take your pick tool to add a couple of them to our card. So we're gonna put one down here, and then I'm gonna put a couple up at the top. I'll do a big one down there and two little up top, just like that. Okay, let's clean up our mess a little bit more and stamp the inside. Like I said, there's more to this card. I haven't shown it all to you yet. Um, I have our phone. This is a rotary dial phone. Most of your average teenagers, um, even 20 somethings are not going to recognize this phone, right? I did grow up with this. I not only grew up with the phone, I grew up with a party line. Um, and I had to, I think I said this on my blog, I had to wait for somebody to get off the phone so that I could um, actually go on the phone. I had I had a girl in my who was my neighbor who was a year younger than me, but loved to talk on the phone. It was a problem. Okay, we've got our, where do we have our Melon Mambo ink? I set it aside here because I knew it was coming back. Okay, we're going to stamp our phone. It's sticky, the ink pad, because it's foam is sticky. I'm gonna make sure that I do a good job doing everything, but I've gotta fix, I've gotta show you something on my other card so that you, I'm gonna put this off to the side so you can even see more. So there we go. And because it's a solid image, when I'm stamping, because I know this is a little, the ink is sticky because there's a lot more ink because of the foam, I like to pick it up and then I rub my hands under here and that gives me a more complete image. And that's not bad. It's, it's a little bit not perfect, but it's not bad. And I'll show you what we're gonna do to fix that. Okay, we're gonna do our receiver. And our receiver is going to go like so just right there. So this is the inside of our card. Perfect. I will clean these off in a second. And then we have our phone cord. Um, we always had a short phone cord, but there is such a thing as a longer phone cord that some people had. But ours was always short. I think my, I couldn't get away with talking in the kitchen on the phone. It's kind of nice now that you have uh, cell phones and you can actually walk away. Um, right here in the middle, 
I'm going to stamp. Okay, I've got to tell you, I was just talking to a friend of mine, my friend Laura in Indiana, and I was telling her about this card. We use the Let's Chat stamp set. Do you know that there is not a stamp in here that says Let's Chat? With me having this beautiful front that says, hey, wouldn't you think it's perfect to say Let's Chat in the inside? Well, not going to happen um, unless you were to type that in and yourself. So what I had in put instead was here for you. Um, there's a hey, there's a hi, there's a hello, there's a ring, and there's here for you. So we're going to do here for you on the, right here in the middle. Just like that. I've got to stand up so I'm doing this right. There we go. And then you can sign down in the corner here. Um, it does, I don't normally do um, big images on the inside, but I kind of liked it. Um, so this is going on the inside. And then let me show you how we're going to fix that where it did not stamp completely. The last thing I'm going to teach you before you go. I don't know if I've said this before. I'm pretty sure I have. But if I don't get a complete image, you can't go over it with blends. You can't go over it with a marker. Your marker is still a little bit darker. Isn't that cute? So down here I would put, I would sign my name. Um, what you need to do instead is actually use your blender pen. So you've got your blender pen, not to be confused with your Stampin' Blends. The blender pen does a really good job. I've got my Melon Mambo here and I've got ink in the lid here. And what I'm going to do First of all, I'm going to color and make sure I don't have, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the Melon Mambo and I'm going to color over here. And this just does a better job of more completely covering it and doing, incorporating the same color. Isn't that nice how that works? I don't know, can you see it a little bit? If you were to use a marker, you would notice and I think in photographs you're going to notice, but if you were to use a marker, you would definitely notice without the camera that it's not the same shade. So I'm gonna go just like that. I'm gonna color in all of my little areas that need a little bit of extra. Ta-da. So it's not perfect, but it's a much closer match. So use your blender pen with your ink pad for the inside, uh, you know, to color the, uh, a, a stamped image that isn't quite perfect. So here we have, oh, I, yes, I did do my iridescent dots, my foil dots. So let me show you the four cards real quick. This one is a completed one. This is the one without the ribbon and without the flowers. I'll get to the flowers at some point, but if you were going to do it, this is what it would look like right there. Then we have our Oh Happy Day with our handsome, handsome, turtle going to see his bow on the bridge and the last one of course is our fun fox having a great time in the rain so i hope you love these cards as much as i do i hope you're inspired to pull out your stamp set again you're playing in the rain stamp set and to spend fifty dollars to get this sunny days designer paper so i hope you love these cards i'm going to flip back and say Oh, thanks, Anne. Every once in a while, I come out with good ideas, right? I'm going to go back and respond to everybody's tips. Uh, not tips, everybody's comments. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for joining me. And next week, I'll be back with another Facebook Live. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.